What is up, guys? Give it up for the band this morning. An amazing, amazing job. Guys, uh, there's a million different places you could be spending Memorial Day at, but we're just so excited that you're here at 9 in the morning hanging out with us, worshiping Jesus, and we're super, super excited about that. And I just want to ask you really quick, who was at Motion Night last Sunday? Quite a few of you. It was pretty crazy, right? Like if I could think of one word to describe all of Motion Night, it would be wild. Like, who knew that Sam Griffin right here could eat so much ice cream with his bare hands? I mean, come on, that's crazy. And uh, man, we had so much crazy stuff. We had, man, we had the ice cream truck here. We had worship. We had over 240 students in this gym. It was incredible. Uh, we, it was even bigger than the last one. And who did the inflatable jousting? Who, who, who knocked somebody off? I didn't, I didn't go against you. I went against Tyler. Did I go against you too? Anyways, who knocked someone off in the jousting? All right, let's be honest really quick. Who got destroyed on the jousting? Anybody get destroyed or knocked off? Okay, a couple of you guys. Anyways, I got totally destroyed by Tyler. He's in my, he's in my uh, 10th grade guys small group. It started out as jousting and then it turned into wrestling and I may or may not have broken a couple ribs, but it's okay. But man, if I'm looking back to all the amazing things that happened, we had first time decisions. We've seen incredible, God do incredible things. And when I think back to all of that, there's one word that I can describe motion night with. It was wild, right? It was pretty crazy in here. And the craziest part is when we looked around, I'm just going to call it for what it is, there was some rowdiness going on, right? There was some rowdiness. There were some people maybe whispering or talking during the sermon. There was some people maybe goofing off or messing around. But when we looked back to it, the reality was there was three times as many lost students in this gym as there were students who are found and know Jesus. So can we give it up for God for that, for sending lost students here? And guys, I get it. It can be really uncomfortable when you're hanging out with a group of students who are a little bit rowdy, people who have never been to church before, they're not sure how to act, um, being around people who are different than us and talk differently, that can be really difficult. And it can be really easy to look back to motion night and be like, man, that was crazy. Those kids talk differently than me. They dress differently than me. They acted differently than me. And I felt kind of uncomfortable by that. If that's you, we, got, we were kind of forgetting what we're all about, our four core values. We care about the lost, and the reality is we had three times as many lost students who did not know Jesus as we had found students. And I think some of the reasons sometimes we feel uncomfortable around people who are different than us is we forget this fact up here on the screen. The one can stink sometimes. You didn't hear me wrong in that, okay? Sometimes the one can be smelly. And you might be like, Silas, what are we talking about? Why are we talking about stinkiness? Why are we talking about smelliness? What, what are we talking about? Well, first, let me tell you what I mean by the one. When I talk about the one during this message this morning, the one is a lost person God has called you to share Jesus with. It's a lost person in your life that God has called you to share Jesus with. And we gave you that challenge the week before motion night in the week, the morning of motion night to find that one. Who is that person the Holy Spirit was laying on your heart to go invite, to go share with? That is the one. And they don't always think like us, act like us, talk like us, or dress like us because they're lost. And sometimes they don't know how to behave at church because they've never been to church before. So here's the deal. That is the one. And the one does not know Jesus, so we can't expect them to act like Jesus, right? If they don't know Jesus, how can we ever expect them to act like Jesus? So are you faithful to invite even when the fish are smelly? We're going to talk about that a little bit. Even when the one is smelly, are you faithful to keep inviting? And here's the fact of the matter is, there was a lot of religious people in Jesus' day who did not like the one. They didn't like the stink. They didn't like the smell of them. They didn't like how they were different. And these religious people in Jesus' day didn't like Jesus because Jesus hung out with these people. Jesus befriended these people. And we see that in Luke chapter 15, verse 1. I'm going to read it together. It says this, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. 
But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and even eats with them. So we see that Jesus, he's hanging out with the one. He's hanging out with the lost people. He's hanging out with the people who aren't at church. And he's hanging out with them. He's befriending them. He's eating dinner with them. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders, are looking at them. And these are the religious people. These are the people who supposedly know God. And they are just roasting Jesus. I mean, they are just looking at Jesus totally disgusted. And here's the deal, guys. Jesus wasn't sinning. Jesus wasn't doing what the sinners were doing. He was just being their friend. And he was just loving on them because he knew they needed help. But man, these Pharisees, they were roasting him, they were making fun of him, they were totally disgusted that Jesus would even sit at a table with such, some translations say, notorious sinners. So these weren't just like regular sinners, these were the sinners that everybody knew about in the community. And Jesus was hanging out with them. Now, if I was Jesus, I would probably get pretty defensive or angry. I'd be like, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm here to, you know, love on them. I'd try to defend myself. Or I would get mad or I would get in an argument. But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't get sad, angry, or lash out back at them. Jesus responds by telling a story. And this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It comes in the next couple verses here. Verse number three, let's read this story together. This is how Jesus responds to the Pharisees. He says this, then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And Jesus tells this awesome story, the story of these 99 sheep. I mean, the 99 sheep are right where they're supposed to be. They're already in church. They're already following God. They're already uh, doing the right things. And, and they're at home. They're safe. They're in the pen. But then the shepherd sees that there's one she- sheep that's missing. And this sheep was doing what he wasn't supposed to do. He was disobeying the shepherd. He was making his own bad choices. And he gets himself lost. And it could be really easy for the shepherd in this situation to say, you know what, they're doing the right thing, so I'm hanging out with them. That sheep, they dug their own grave, they made their own mistakes. Now it has to live with the consequences of its actions. I'm done with them. Jesus could have said that. The the shepherd could have said that. But no, we see in the story, the shepherd leaves the 99 to go after that one sheep who makes all the mistakes, and we see that, that Jesus always leaves the 99 to go for the one sheep who's lost. I want to know by show of hands, who's ever been around sheep before? <clears throat> Anybody? Who's, have you ever been to a 4-H fair? Anyone been to a 4-H fair before? So I had a lot of students in my old youth group who were into 4-H, and I remember going to the stables, and people had sheep, and man, they were bathing the sheep. They were shearing and like kind of giving the sheep a haircut. They were even using a little blow dryer thing to make its fur like stick out a certain way so it just looks perfect. They would shampoo it so it smelled good. And they would do all these things to the sheep. It was it was kind of hilarious. Everyone before the show was all you could go back in the barn and I would go back there to visit my students. And they'd be back there like brushing their sheep or combing their pig's hair. It It was crazy. But the thing about the sheep that really stuck out to me is that no matter how much they did to that sheep, It stunk. Like it still smelled like poop up in there in that barn. No matter how much shampoo they used, no matter how much they combed the sheep's hair, no matter what, man, that sheep did not smell good. So that's a sheep that was just sheared and given shampoo and kind of made to look good so that they could show it to the judge. But now imagine a sheep that is lost and how bad that sheep would smell. Check this video out. So a guy just sheared a record 89 pounds off a wool off a sheep in Australia. You have to see this poor sheep. He could barely move. This is Chris the sheep, natural name for a sheep. Uh, He was (laughs) shaved this morning. So experts say he had been living in the wild, hadn't been clipped in about six years, and had so much wool he could barely walk, poor guy. 
the sheep actually had to be sedated before he was sheared. Well, let's get his after picture. Look at him. It's look like, it looks like he went on like a diet program or something. What a handsome fella. The whole thing took about 40 minutes. And if Chris's owner can't be found, he's going to be put up for adoption. A little lighter on his feet. Okay, that diet comment feet. was a little mean, i got to be honest. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that sheep, right? That sheep was lost for six years. And that sheep grew uh, 89 pounds of excess wool, of excess fur. And I can't imagine after six years how many bugs were in there, how much dirt and filth was in there, how much moldy, nasty water was trapped in there. Like that sheep, like if that sheep smelled bad at the 4-H fair, this sheep had to smell probably 10 times worse. So the story doesn't specify how long that sheep was lost, but this is what our mind can go to because we see that there's just six years, 89 pounds worth of stank here, Right? Like, it's just it's probably disgusting. It took them almost an hour to shave all the fur off of that poor sheep. But this is the picture we can get in our heads when we think of that lost sheep. Now imagine with me a person with six years of sin struggle, with six years of baggage, with six years in a toxic situation, uh, in six years of a bad home life, and that's just six years, let alone maybe someone's whole life how uncomfortable it could be to be around that person. Like, I don't know about you, it'd be pretty unpleasant to be around that sheep with how bad it smelled. And then take a person who's lost and doesn't know Jesus, sometimes they can be unpleasant to be around as well. It's the same today. There's, there's a lot of religious people who don't want to be around the smell. There's a lot of churches out there who are all about the 99. They're all about people who come in with the slicked over hair, but they don't want anything to do with the stank, is what I call it. They don't want anything to do with the one. They just want the people who are dressed well, who know how to act, who know how to behave, people who aren't whispering during the message, people who aren't laughing during the worship or not taking it seriously. They don't want any of that, because that makes them feel uncomfortable, because they're different. But Jesus was always about the one. And he left the 99 every time. And I thank Jesus that here at Eastside, we are a church that cares about the one. We love the 99, we love you guys, but we care about the one too. We have to care about the one because that is the heart of God, the heart that God has for the one. And he leaves them every single time, no matter what it costs him. It even costed him his life. And we see that. Amy shared this verse, I'm sharing it too. Romans 5.8. It says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I've shared this verse, I'm pretty sure, with you guys before, but it's one of my favorite verses because it doesn't say, when, did they, when they came back, Jesus died for them. When the sheep came home, when the sheep cleaned up its act. No, Jesus died for us while we were lost, while we needed him, while we were still making fun of him or goofing off or not knowing or caring about Jesus. Jesus loved us and still died for us even when we stuck even when we didn't have it all figured out. And I don't know about you, but if Jesus can do that for me when I've messed up, I can do that for someone else. So this is the idea I want to end with is, what does that look like for us? For us to love the one. For you to love the one and you to love the one. Each and every one of us, what does that look like for us to love the one? This is what it looks like. All right, who in here is a seafood fan? Anyone a seafood fan, okay? All right, what's your favorite seafood dish? Anyone, let's see a couple answers, Riley. Shrimp, shrimp. I love shrimp. Sam? Lobster. Lobster. Casey, right? What was it? Shrimp. shrimp. California. California rolls, yes, I love sushi. Let's get one more, Sophia. Sushi, all right, we'll get you two, Trevor. What, what do you got? Sushi? Cool. Sushimi, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds delicious. But anyways, man, I love seafood. In fact, me and my buddies at church growing up in youth group, after church, they used to give you these things at church called a church bulletin. Who knows what a church bulletin is? Anybody? Okay, a lot of you are like, what's that? 
at a lot of churches, they give you a piece of paper when you come to church, and it has like the announcements and the sermon notes in there. But they had this deal at Captain D's. It's a fast food, like seafood restaurant, kind of like Long John Silver's. They had this deal. If you brought your bulletin in on Sunday, you got 50% off. So me and my friends would come. There was three of us. We'd go to Captain D's. We'd give them the bulletin, and we'd say, we want the family feast that was worth like $50 or $60. And we'd, get it, we'd all split it. For, and we'd have like literally this like... This meal that literally fed like, like I don't know, like 10 people, and we'd split it between the three of us. But anyways, we love seafood. What about Red Lobster? Red Lobster fans? And those cheddar rolls and the crab legs. Oh, man, that lobster tail hits the butter. It's amazing. Man, that is what we're talking about, right? Can anyone go, she? Man, when that lobster tail hits the butter, that's what I want to say, okay? So anyways, man, I love seafood. I love it, but here's the deal. I don't want us to miss this. I know we're talking about the seafoods we like and stuff, but I don't want you to miss this. The transformation of that fish or that lobster was so incredible that we forget what it used to be. The transformation of that seafood was so incredible that we forget what it used to be. That's what it used to look like. So on the flip side, who's ever been to like not a seafood restaurant? Imagine the smells, the good smells of red lobster. Now imagine a, a fish market. Who's ever been to a fish market? I remember I went to one in New York City. It was one of the foulest smelling places I've ever been. Like they have ice out everywhere. They have fish with the eyeballs still in their heads. It kind of smelled like a dog's fart mixed with that dude who has BO on your football team. That's what it smelled like, okay? It was so nasty in there. And these fish had their eyeballs still on. Like they weren't even flayed or cut up. It was disgusting. I was like, man, how do I even eat this? And it can be easy for us to see fish like this and be like, I want nothing to do with this fish. I don't want to, I don't even want to, like, I don't want to eat this. I'm done with seafood. I'm swearing off seafood because that is disgusting. Because we forgot what they could be. Because if you filleted that fish, you cleaned it, you filleted it, you marinated it, you seasoned it, you, you cooked it, and you served it with a basket of fries, it would look a lot more delicious, right? It would look a lot better. Am I right? Anyways, in the same way, man, how amazing would it be if you looked at a person in your life who does not know Jesus, and they look completely different because they met Jesus. And they transformed so much that you don't even remember what they used to look like before they knew Jesus. Just like that fish, like they look so different, like a basket, a fried fish basket looks so much different than a raw fish that comes out of the ocean or out of a lake. In the same way, man, how cool would it be if there was someone in your life who looked so different because of Jesus, you don't even remember what they used to be like. And if you do remember, it's a powerful testimony because Jesus has changed their life. Guys, if you don't love a fish, if you don't love the one at their stinkiest, at their worst, then you can't be willing to see what Jesus could do in their life, the potential Jesus could have in their life. But let's be honest, guys. God has called us to be fisher of men. He's called us to go after the one, even when they smell. But let's be honest, a lot of us don't want to do that. It makes a lot of us uncomfortable. And when I think those things, I have to remind myself, I'm so glad that Jesus didn't say that about me when I was at my worst. I'm so glad Jesus didn't say that about me when I made fun of God or I thought church was a joke. I'm glad Jesus didn't say that to me and say, I'm done with this smelly fish. You know, I'm swearing off Silas. No, Jesus loved me. He trusted the process. He he worked through me. He sanctified me. And he slowly worked, tugged at my heart until I gave my life to Jesus. I gave my life to him and he changed me. Because we got to be willing to be with the smell. We got to be willing to put up with people who don't know Jesus yet because they're still learning. And how radical, how insane would it be to see Jesus change someone in your life's life for the very first time? The band's going to come back up. We're going to do something a little bit differently than we normally do. And we're going to play a song, and this song is all about the one. And it's all about how the shepherd who represents Jesus is always going after the one. Always leaving the 99 in the open countryside to find the one who is lost. So who is that one in your life? I've said this phrase before, who's your one? Is the, are they on your team? Are they in band with you? Are they in your class? Are they in your family? Who is your one? 
And even if they've mocked you or made fun of you, who's that person you can never give up on? Because Jesus calls us to love the lost. So don't get so caught up in the 99, guys. This is great what we have here. We can build each other up. We can encourage each other. We gotta remember, we meet as the 99 because we need to go after the one. Let me pray for us. Thank you, Jesus, for an amazing morning. Thank you for everything you've given us. And Jesus, I just think back to my life and I'm so grateful that when I was 15 years old, you chased me down. You found me when I was lost, and you changed my life. So Jesus, I just thank you, I love you, I thank you for everything you've done. And Jesus, I pray that every student in this room could know that and feel loved, to know that Jesus loved you enough to die on the cross for you and to seek and to save you while they were still sinners. And God, I pray that that inspires them to wanna reach their one, to reach the lost person they know in their life, to never give up on them, no matter what. Thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I spoke a word singing over me You've been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You've been so, so kind
no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you're coming after me. There's no shadow. keeping this moment together, I want to do something really special. So if you're an eighth grader, I want you to stand up. Where are my eighth graders at? We got three right here. All my eighth graders, come on up here. And I just want you to kind of make, just stand in line up here up front. So you guys might not realize this, or if you did realize this, um, this is actually the last Sunday before move up Sunday. I know, so this is kind of sad. But it's also really special because these eighth graders have been hanging out with us, some for a short period of time, some for a long time. We just want us to take a minute just to honor our eighth graders here uh, for all the fun memories we had and everything. Um, so can we just give it up for our eighth graders for hanging out with us at ESM? Man, we're just proud of you guys. And before we send you back to your seats, I wanna do a couple things for you. One, I wanna pray for you guys because you're going into high school. And that means next week you all will be invited to our high school services on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. Um, but I want to be able to pray over you guys because with high school comes new challenges, new struggles, and, and new hurdles to overcome. So we just want to send you out as your MSM family and let you know that we're still here for you. We're still be, we still love you guys. We'll still be praying for you guys. So let me pray for our eighth graders. If you guys would bow your heads, let me pray for our eighth graders here. And we'll get back into what we're doing. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for every eighth grader in this room. Thank you for sending them to us. And God, I know with high school, there's new struggles, there's new challenges. So I just pray that your spirit will continue to guide them every step of the way. Father, I pray that they can continue to be a light for you, Jesus, in their high schools. And even when they feel like they're the new people, they're the freshmen, that can be intimidating. God, I pray you give them a spirit of courage, a spirit of boldness, no matter if they're mocked or made fun of, no matter if they're like a lamb amongst wolves. God, I pray that you give them the strength to keep going and going and going to share your love with others. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for these eighth graders. Thank you for sending them to MSM so they could bring us joy and that we could just get a chance to have a relationship with them. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Eighth graders, I got donuts for you guys. If you want to grab a donut, you can, and then y'all can go back to your seat if you want. So let's give it up for our eighth graders one more time. And that also means next week, I'm sorry for the rest of the middle schoolers, but there's gonna be a bunch of crazy fourth graders moving up over here. So that's kind of exciting too. So, hey guys, can we also give it up for the band? That song was incredible. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, so we're going to break into our table groups. But before we do that, I have one announcement for you guys. Next week is the launch for our summer kickoff. We're kicking off the summer. We're launching our At The Movie series. Who, remember, who liked At The Movies last year? We have popcorn, man. We're going to have drinks. It's going to be awesome. So we're having our At The Movie series starting next week. Make sure to check out our summer schedule. 
And during life group times, listen guys, during life group times throughout the summer, we have our super summer Sundays. So every Sunday afternoon, we're doing something cool, whether it's cart country, bowling, whether we're having a field day or a movie night, we do fun things all summer long on Sunday afternoons. And to kick off the summer, we have our ESM mystery trip. We're going to Big Splash Adventure a week from tomorrow. If that snuck up on you and you didn't realize, that is one week from tomorrow. So if you were red team, any red team people in here? All right, if you're a red team, you get to go for free, so you can sign up. And if you're an eighth grader, you still get to go on that trip. I talked to Luke. You can still go if you want to. So there's our link for red team to go for free. For everyone else, it's $40. It covers your ticket. It covers the bus ride, and it covers lunch, free lunch. So anyways, if you come, we're going to hang out all day in French Lake's about an hour away. We're going to leave in the morning. Um, and we're gonna hang out at that water park all day and come back at night. It's gonna be really fun. It's a great way to kick off the summer with MSM. It's gonna be awesome. So sign up. This is the last week to sign up. And we have 50 spots, but we only have like eight people signed up right now. Okay, so if you guys could fill out some of the spots, that would be amazing. But this is the last week we'll have the ticket spots open. It's gonna be really fun. And we hope to see you guys there. So when you leave your table groups, make sure go up to your mom or dad, grandma, whoever, and say, hey, sign me up for the big splash trip. Okay, guys? All right, we're gonna head back to our groups. Go ahead and head over to your group. If you don't know where to go, come find me. I will point you in the right direction.